In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Christ is in our midst. He was, is, and always shall be. In today's Gospel reading, we hear something very unique when Christ goes up to pray. Many times we think of Christ as being just very calm and very stoic, as the Gospels many times portray him. But we see that there's a range of emotions that Christ expresses in the Gospel reading today. We see that he's going up to the mountain to pray with his disciples. And as he's walking up to pray, he falls down on his face. Not because anyone tripped him, not because he was beaten, not because he was tired, but because he was sad. He was emotionally distraught about the coming of his own death. And he says, if this can be taken away from me, if this could stop and end, that would be wonderful. But I know that it's the will of God that this happens. When he went to pray, he came back and told his disciples, can you just watch for a few moments and watch over me? Now, we might not know why he said that for them to watch, but he knew that Judas was coming. He knew that the time was coming where the, the, the people were going to come in a crowd with clubs and swords to seize him. And he wanted to pray just a little bit more. So he comes back to them and says, can you just watch while I go pray? And he goes and he prays and he does it again. He falls down and he says, please, if this cannot happen, but your will be done, the will of God will be done. He comes back and sees the disciples and they're sleeping. And then you can hear in, in the way the scripture is written, but maybe not in the inflections that he would have had. He said, I asked you just to, to watch for an hour and you couldn't do it. He says, please, just watch. I'm going to go pray some more. He goes back and prays again. He falls down again and it says, the gospel says, he says for the third time the same thing in his prayers. And he comes back and he sees the disciples sleeping because the gospel says that they were very tired. And he says, you're sleeping again. Get up. Time to get up. You know why? Because my betrayer is at hand. And as he says this, Judas walks in and comes up to him with all those with clubs and swords. But we see that Christ prayed with emotion. Praying with emotion is key to any dialogue with God. In fact, it's key to our relationships with one another. You know when someone's listening to you, and you know when someone's not listening to you, just by the way that they respond to what you're saying. And sometimes we don't even respond with listening to the actual question that's being asked to us. Many times I will ask small children, I'll say, how's it going? And they say, okay, good. And I said, what's going on? If I change it and say that, what's going on? They go, good. Because they're so used to a standard rote response. In fact, when we say the Lord's Prayer, is it that we just say like robots, a robotic way that we say it in the Lord's Prayer, like robots, or is it that we say it and mean it in our prayers? Christ gives us the example today, and he says in his actions and in his prayers, pray hard, speak from your heart. If you don't know the prayers of the church, it's not the end of the world. Pray from your heart. Speak to God the way you feel inside. Christ, when he goes and prays today in the gospel, he falls down on his face. He doesn't start saying all these other standardized prayers. He doesn't start saying the Psalms and the scripture in the Old Testament. He just says, why does this have to be this bad? Why do my disciples have to fall away? Why does one disciple have to betray me? In fact, in the gospel today, it says that 
it would have been better had Judas never been born than to betray Christ. But he asks his disciples, can you just watch just for a moment? Just cover me for a second. Watch my back while I go for a moment, the last private moment that Christ had to himself. Think about it. Three years, Christ is teaching. He's with his disciples day in, day out. People are breaking into his house through the roof, lowering uh, paralytics in. Everywhere he goes, there's a crowd. And he, in his last moments prior to being captured and his trial, and if you even want to call it a trial, his judgment, his crucifixion, his death, just asks his disciples, just give me a few minutes, a few minutes to talk to my father, to your father, to my God, and to your God. Just watch for a few minutes. And they couldn't do it. They were too tired. This gospel is a reminder to us that we have to be vigilant in what God is asking us to do. He's not asking us to watch his back anymore. He's enthroned in heaven. Christ is looking down on all of us. But what has he asked us to do? That we may say, I'm too tired to do. Or that we may not follow his words and say, you know what? He's got it covered. This is one of the few times in the gospel that Christ actually asked the disciples to do something for him. Something very easy. Just watch. Just let me know when they're coming. And they didn't understand. And they were tired. Jesus knew that the, those were his last moments. But he asks us all something similar, and yet he asks each one of us something different. He asks us to do his will in the way that he wants for each of our lives, which is different for every one of us, but the common thread is talking to God, praying to him, and listening to what he's asked us to do. To pray, to forgive, to love, to repent. All these things that I've said throughout this week that are common themes. He's asked us to do these things. Very simple, nothing complicated. He didn't ask his disciples even to fight for him or fend them off until I'm done praying. He said, just let me know. Just watch for a few minutes. Christ is asking us to watch over the world now with our prayers, to watch over each other with what we say in our outreach, to minister to those who are in need, and to continue to ask for the help in the world as we pray in the liturgy and as we say in our prayers. This is what he's asking us to do. It's a 21st century, very easy command. Pray, watch, look out for people, help them, do what you can. Give in ways that you can give, but most of all, give from your heart. And when we say our prayers, to not say something like a robot, to not say a prayer wrote or just pick up something and say it without feeling, but to feel what we're going to say, even if it's short. One of the shortest prayers in the church is the prayer of the Holy Mountain, of Mount Athos, that we have in our current day and age. We have it, we say it, many uh, people say it in the, in the church, clergy, lay people, which is the Jesus prayer. Lord Jesus, have mercy on me. We can either say it, Lord Jesus, have mercy on me. Or we can say, Lord Jesus, have mercy on me. How we say things to God is as important as how we say things to each other. Listen. Use your heart to speak. Speak to people with words that are important. Not fluff, not the mundane or the pointless. But speak to people from your heart. Listen to what they're saying to you. And most importantly, listen to what God is saying to you. Because when you speak to him, he hears you. 
we may think he doesn't answer our prayers right away, but he hears us. He knows what we need, and he's waiting for us to ask and to give us the things that are beneficial for our souls. Pray earnestly and watch just for a small amount of time that we have in this life to watch over others, to watch over our family, our friends, and to allow ourselves time to be with God and to ask him for everything in our lives. Amen.